Sometimes you have to trust your gut instincts. Am I wrong for leaving my husband over his obsession with his former nanny? I, a 35-year-old woman, have been married to my husband, Ben, who is 42, for five years. We have a beautiful four-year-old son named Chad. From the outside, our life probably looked perfect. Nice house, good jobs, a happy little family. But there's been one constant shadow over my marriage, Ben's weird attachment to his former nanny, Barbara. I've always sensed something was off about their relationship, and now it's become impossible to ignore. When Chad was born, I planned to take time off work to be a full-time mom for a while. I was excited to bond with my baby and take on all the challenges that come with being a new parent. But Ben immediately started pushing for Barbara to come and live with us to help out. Barbara is only 10 years older than Ben, and she was his nanny when he was younger. He swears she's like family to him, but the way they act around each other doesn't sit right with me. For starters, they're overly affectionate with each other. I've caught them sitting way too close on the couch, practically cuddling. Once I walked in on them and his arm was around her shoulder while they were laughing together. When they noticed me, they quickly jumped apart, like teenagers who got caught doing something they shouldn't. That wasn't all. There were other intimate things they did that left me feeling like the odd one out in my own marriage. Barbara always had a key to our house, even when there was no need for it. She'd come over unannounced, sometimes with groceries or baked goods, and Ben would light up like she was his long-lost love. He'd also take phone calls from her late at night with their conversations full of inside jokes that I was never part of. It was clear they shared something deeper than just an employer-nanny relationship. Then there was the way she constantly gave Ben advice about me and how we should raise Chad. She'd undermine me saying things like, oh, when I raised Ben, I always did this, or I know Ben better than anyone. You should really listen to me. Ben would hang on to her every word like she was the ultimate authority on everything, which only deepened my unease. The final straw came when Ben kept insisting Barbara move in with us to help raise Chad. I made it clear from the beginning that I didn't want a nanny. I wanted to be the one to take care of my son, and I didn't need anyone, especially not her, getting in the way. I was firm about it, telling Ben, it's either me or Barbara, you can't have both. I thought that was the end of it, but then one day I came home to find Barbara sitting in our living room with her bags neatly stacked by the front door. Ben had moved her in anyway as a surprise. That was it for me. I packed my things, took Chad and left for my parents' house. I couldn't believe he had crossed that line after I made it crystal clear that I wasn't comfortable with Barbara being in our home, especially under the same roof, raising our son. Now I'm staying with my parents trying to figure out what to do. The weird part is, even though my dad agrees with me, he thinks Barbara is, well, weird AF in his words, my mom has been telling me I'm overreacting. She thinks it's unrealistic for me to expect Ben to cut Barbara out of his life when she's been part of his upbringing. But I don't see it that way. This isn't just some old family friend. This is a woman who has clearly crossed boundaries and I've always had the nagging feeling that there's something more between them than they're willing to admit. My mom keeps saying that I should be more understanding, that Barbara is just part of Ben's past and I shouldn't feel threatened by her presence. But how can I not? I'm his wife, the mother of his child, and I feel like I'm being pushed aside for this more than a nanny figure who seems to have a deeper hold on him than I ever realized. Even if there's no physical affair, the emotional dynamic between them feels wrong. I've tried to explain this to my mom, but she keeps brushing it off, saying I'm being too dramatic. My dad, on the other hand, has always felt uneasy about Barbara. He's told me multiple times that it's not normal for a grown man to be so attached to his former nanny, especially one who acts more like a partner than a family friend. He agrees that I shouldn't have to put up with this and that Ben's disregard for my feelings is a major red flag. I keep going back and forth in my head. Am I really being unrealistic or is this a deal breaker? I want to raise my son in a loving, stable home, but how can I do that when I feel like there's a third person in my marriage, one who has more influence over my husband than I do? I can't ignore the emotional manipulation that seems to be going on. 
Ben has always put Barbara on a pedestal, and the fact that he moved her in without even consulting me feels like a huge betrayal. I'm wondering if I'm wrong for ending my marriage over this. Maybe it's all in my head and Barbara's just a close friend. But then again, I can't shake the feeling that if I stay, I'll always be second to her. So, am I wrong for drawing a hard line and refusing to live with a woman who feels like more than just a nanny? Should I have given Ben an ultimatum in the first place, or did I do the right thing by taking a stand? The original poster has added an update to the following story. Am I wrong for leaving my husband over his relationship with his former nanny? I didn't expect to be writing an update, but here we are. After I left Ben and took Chad to my parents' house, things escalated quickly. My dad was all for me staying away and my mom kept urging me to see reason and work things out. I wasn't sure what the right move was. I knew I couldn't go back while Barbara was still living in my house, but the weight of everything was pulling me in so many directions. Finally, after a few days of silence, Ben showed up at my parents' house wanting to talk. He looked devastated, which at first I brushed off as manipulation, but then he admitted something I wasn't prepared for. He confessed that Barbara wasn't just his childhood nanny. She was his first love, his first everything. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. The woman who had been a thorn in my side for years had once been that important to him, and I had no idea. It all started when Ben was in college. He was 19, Barbara was 29, and she'd come to visit him at his dorm one night for dinner. He said they'd always had a close bond, but that night, something shifted. It was a casual dinner that turned into talking late into the night, reminiscing about his childhood, and her comforting him about how lonely he felt at college. He admitted that he had always had a bit of a crush on her, but he never imagined it would turn into anything more. Then it did. That night, after hours of talking, something clicked between them, and it crossed into physical territory. He said it was inevitable, like something that had been building up for years without either of them realizing it. He described it as one of those moments that feels bigger than life when you're in it. And he said it was the first time he'd ever been in love, but that wasn't the worst of it. Barbara got pregnant that night. I was in shock when he said this and it felt like a punch to the gut. He went on to say that she lost the pregnancy early on they didn't talk much after that, and Barbara disappeared from his life for a few years. He said he felt devastated and confused, but he tried to move on. Years later, he ran into her by chance at a supermarket. He said when he saw her, it felt like those old feelings reignited, even though they were both in different places in life. They caught up, and while they didn't cross the line physically again, there was always an intimacy between them that he couldn't explain something unspoken, like they were forever bonded by that night. He swore that after that, they never slept together again. She stayed in his life, visiting occasionally, and he thought of her as a friend, even though there was always that lingering sense of what could have been. He said he never planned on rekindling those feelings, but they were always there, under the surface. That's why, when I put my foot down about not having Barbara move in, it felt like I was asking him to choose between two parts of his life. but then he dropped the final bombshell. The night I left and took Chad to my parents' house, Barbara was there with him. He said she came to comfort him, like she always had, and one thing led to another. It started out with her reassuring him, telling him that everything would be okay, and before he knew it, they crossed that line again. I was numb listening to him tell me this. I had always suspected something between them, but hearing him say it, especially after all the years of denying it, felt like a knife to the heart. He said he felt terrible about it, that it wasn't planned, but that it made him question everything about his relationship with Barbara. He realized he was wrong to bring her back into our lives, especially without my consent, and now he's questioning his entire dynamic with her. He said he never wanted to hurt me, but it's clear he's been living in the shadow of that first love for years. He wants to make things right, but I don't know if I can. It's not just about the affair, it's about the years of secrets, the emotional betrayal, and the fact that he put Barbara above me in so many ways without ever being honest about what she meant to him. Now I'm left wondering if I was ever really his partner, or if I was always just a placeholder for Barbara. 
I don't know if I can forgive him, even though he says he regrets everything. Part of me wonders if they were ever truly over, or if I was just blind to what was happening in front of me all along. So, am I wrong for ending this marriage? Should I try to work through this, or is it time to let go of someone who's clearly been stuck in the past all along? The original poster is back with a final update to the story about how she left her husband because of his unnatural obsession with the nanny. My marriage is over and I finally moved on. It's been a while since my last update and a lot has changed. The short version? My marriage is over and I'm better off for it. After Ben's confession about his long, complicated relationship with Barbara, I knew I couldn't stay. The emotional betrayal ran too deep, and the years of secrets and strange intimacy were something I'd never get over. I packed my things, took Chad, and moved out for good. It was hard at first, but I knew that leaving was the only way I could find peace. A few months after the separation, I ran into Ben's old college roommate at the county fair. I'd met him a few times before, back when Ben and I were still together, so we chatted for a bit, catching up on life. When I mentioned that Ben and I weren't together anymore, his face immediately changed, like he knew exactly why. He gave me this look and said, This is because of Barbara, right? I always told him that would come back to bite him in the ass. He started going into detail about Ben and Barbara's relationship back in college. Apparently, it was more intense than I'd ever imagined. Ben had always painted Barbara as his beloved nanny, but his roommate had seen things I never knew about. He recalled odd moments like how Ben would constantly sneak off to visit her when she wasn't working, and how Barbara would show up on campus staying with him under the guise of catching up. He mentioned once finding them curled up on the couch together in a way that was way too cozy for a nanny and her former charge. He also told me that he'd warned Ben multiple times. He said, I told him having Barbara around after he got married was a terrible idea. There was always this tension between them, this weird vibe that felt like unfinished business. But Ben, as always, had brushed off his friend's concerns. He thought he could keep Barbara in his life without it affecting his marriage. Well, we all know how that turned out. It was almost validating to hear that I wasn't imagining things that the odd connection between Ben and Barbara had always been there, even back in college. I wasn't crazy for feeling like I was constantly competing with her. I wasn't wrong to walk away. As for Ben and Barbara, they're not together anymore. She moved out of the house right after I left. From what I've heard, she stayed away for a while, but as soon as Ben started dating again, she popped right back up, hovering on the fringes of his life, just like she always did. I'm happy to be out of that cycle. It was exhausting, and I've realized that the life I was trying so hard to save was never a life I truly wanted. But here's the best part of my update. I've met someone new. His name is Eric, and he's a stockbroker. He works long hours, but I never have to share him with anyone. No lingering nannies or secret first loves. He's fully present in our relationship, and he's a wonderful stepfather to Chad. We've built a life together that feels real, uncomplicated, and honest. It's everything I never had with Ben, and I'm grateful every day that I found the strength to leave. Of course, I grieved the life I thought I would have with Ben, the perfect family, the happily ever after, but I've come to see that what I was holding onto wasn't real. It was an illusion. Now I have the life I deserve, one where I don't have to fight for space in my own home or wonder if my husband's heart belongs to someone else. I've moved on, and it feels good to finally be free.